Today, I'm going to be diving into something that accounts for 40% of our behaviors in a given day. That is right. We are going to be talking about habits. And according to researchers at Duke University, habits do account for 40% of our behaviors throughout the day. Understanding how to build new habits and how your old ones work is going to be essential for being able to have progress in your health, your happiness, and just your life in general. So I'm going to be going over some of the top tips I have found to make habits simple. And notice how I didn't say easy because there's going to be a difference between something being simple versus being easy. It's simple enough when you think about your health of being able to get 10K steps in a day, being able to get a gallon of water, or being able to focus on moving your body. But just because it's simple doesn't always make it easy. And I find that oftentimes people try to interchange those terms, and then it becomes very very discouraging because building a habit isn't always easy, but it can be simple if we break it down into a few different steps. The first thing, which might seem kind of obvious, but I've seen in my own life and in many others, it doesn't always come across as obvious, and it's don't try to start 12 different habits at once. Let's say that you're trying to make a change in your health, and you're not currently tracking food, you're not currently going to the gym, uh, and you're not currently getting in the recommended water amount that you need to get in. If you start and you say, I'm going to now go to the gym five days a week, I'm going to track my food every single day, and I am going to get in a gallon of water a day, that's going to be a lot to go ahead ahead and get started with. Now, this doesn't mean that you can't have multiple habits at once, but while you're trying to really get traction in a habit and starting something new, I highly recommend with starting with one, maybe two habits if habit building and formation is already something that you've gotten in the habit of doing. So myself, for example, I have been able to really maintain and keep a lot of habits in my day-to-day. So sometimes I can do two new habits habits at once, but in the same thing, I'm not trying to go full-fledged in both of those habits. So that's going to be the next thing here is starting small when you are getting started with these new habits. I recommend starting with something that doesn't take much motivation to do. What I mean by that is instead of starting off and saying, I'm starting with the hobby of reading or my new habit is going to be reading and I'm going to start with reading 20 minutes a day. That is going to take some motivation. It's going to take setting aside time in your schedule to get into reading 20 minutes a day every day when you're going from barely reading at all. But being able to start with something of, I'm going to start with reading one page a day or one minute a day, that is something that you don't normally need a lot of motivation to do because it's just one minute. It's just one page. And being able to start small also allows you to continue to progress within your habits overall. So if you start with one page, one minute a day, you can build that over time versus if you start with the 20 minutes every day, that could be something that you possibly fail with. And then that really makes it harder to get up and do it the next day. But it also could be something where maybe 20 minutes is the maximum that you can devote in a given day. And you've already gotten to the top end of that with starting out. So it doesn't give you room to grow and to flourish within that habit. Starting off, you're focusing more on performing the habit than on what the outcome is going to be because of the habit. Because right now, you're really focusing on developing the skill of consistency within that habit. And I know I've mentioned things like maybe you're going to read for one minute a day, but one thing within starting habits is consistent isn't the same as doing it every single day. So that's something that I had to realize for myself because a lot of habits, let's talk about ones that are more baked into our day-to-day, something like brushing your teeth. You're going to do that every day and probably more than one time a day. And so when it comes to thinking of a new habit, you might feel like, oh my gosh, now I have to do it every single day. But that might not be how it works into your life. It might be that you do it two times a week or maybe you do it every other week depending on what the habit is. Because to be able to get that consistency, we're really working on reducing the mental burden. So let's take, for example, you've probably seen memes about it when people talk about cardio and they might say like, okay, I have 40 minutes of cardio left. But then they say, no, I actually have four 10-minute quarters of cardio left. Being able to break that down into smaller pieces that are going to bring down the mental burden instead of saying, okay, now I have to do 40 full minutes, that again can get very over 
overwhelming and push you over the edge into not doing something where we want to do something that takes very little motivation to do because you might not have built up the motivation or the discipline to continue to do that thing. Because willpower is like a muscle. It gets fatigued as you use it throughout the day. So that kind of flows into my second tip, which is to be able to reduce any barriers that are in your way when you're going about forming a habit. I always think of how can I make it easier for myself or how can I make it easier for future Sue? Because there's a lot of times where future Sue is very upset at past Sue for not doing something. So when I am current Sue, aka past Sue for my future self, I always think about what I would want in the future so I can really show up for that version of myself. Even something as simple as yesterday, I was thinking of being able to have everything set for this day. And I really just want Wanted to end my work day and chill, but I thought, okay, if I can just get some laundry done, get some things cleaned up and set myself up for the day, I'll be in a much better spot. So being able to really look out for future you instead of just what your current self wants. But again, that comes with being able to take away any barriers or any friction that you might have. I recently shared an example on my Instagram story where I was talking about going to yoga and the yoga class I go to is an earlier morning class. And with that, It's sometimes where Alex and I go together, but other times it's just one of us going. And there's a few different things. There's the barrier of waking up and being able to get to the class on time. There's the barrier of picking out an outfit and making sure that it fits and I feel good in it. There's the barrier of being able to wash my face and make sure that I have time to do all of these things that I'm mentioning. There's the barrier of making sure my water bottle is filled, making sure I have electrolytes, making sure I have my bag packed for the next day. There's multiple barriers that can stop me from going to that class. So anywhere, any way I can lessen those barriers or lessen the friction that it takes to do it, it makes it kind of like a no-duh type of moment. So when I was going to yoga, I had tried on the outfit, so not just laying it out, because unless I have worn those clothes together recently, I will try them on. And even sometimes, even if I know, hey, I like like these clothes and I wear them semi-frequently, I sometimes still will try them on, whether it's to make sure that they go together or that I just feel confident in it because there are times throughout the month that I might feel a little bit different about my body. And I want to make sure, especially for something like yoga, where I'm trying to show up and be very mindful. If I'm in a place where I'm uncomfortable in the clothes that I'm wearing or I am self-conscious about what I'm wearing, I'm gonna be more focused on that than being able to be really intentional with what I'm doing. And so that's something where I'm taking away friction because if I know, hey, I'm trying to pick out an outfit and I didn't even try it on, but I'm already running late, that's gonna put me in a place where I'm a little distracted or might think, why should I even go? So the night before I laid out my electrolytes, I filled up my my water bottle and set it by my bag. I had my shoes sitting by my bag. I had my bag with my purse in it all ready to go and a change of clothes for after yoga because it was a hot yoga and I wanted to go walk and get coffee. And I knew sweaty clothes when it was a little bit chilly outside was not going to be the move whatsoever. I also made sure that I filled up another water bottle to put my electrolytes in um, and had everything ready to go, had my clothes all ready. So then when it came to the morning, I didn't have to worry about, okay, getting all these things together, because that can also hinder my sleep the night before when I'm thinking about all the other things I need to do. So it allowed me to sleep a lot better. I had everything prepared. I didn't have to worry about turning on lights, rummaging through drawers, or possibly waking up Alex. I was able to just grab my stuff, get changed, go downstairs, and finish up everything else that I needed to do to put me in a place where it was easy to go to yoga and or simple, but I had made it easy easy for myself. Whereas if I didn't have any of that prepared, it could have hindered my sleep because I was thinking about the things I need to get done. I could have woken up possibly late, been a little bit in a frenzy, and then not been in the right headspace going into yoga. And just a multitude of things that, again, have that friction within going to do a task. So if there's anything that you find friction with, and now let's take something like eating your meals or hitting your macros, there's a few different ways that we can lessen the friction there. Number one, 
could be pre-tracking your meals so that you don't have to have any decision fatigue throughout the day. You don't have to have any willpower fatigue throughout the day. You're just able to know, I have my meals planned, I know what they are, and that's what I'm going to eat. And you don't have to play macro Tetris and think about what you're eating. You just already know what that looks like. Another way about going about this is just having meals prepped and or groceries ready to go, where for me, when it comes to eating um, and eating in a way that fits with my lifestyle, one of the biggest things that I struggle with is not eating enough. Now, I know I never thought I would be that person, but with how busy life is nowadays, it can be really difficult to make sure I stop and eat. And the number one thing that stops me from eating enough is when I don't have food prepared. Because if I don't have food prepared, then I'm in a place where I'm working. I don't really want to take a break. And then I think about the burden of how it's going to be. Now I need to think of what I'm going to eat. I need to make the food. Then I need to eat it. Then I need to pick it up and then go back to work. That feels like a lot in the moment. Whereas if I'm in a place where I know the food is already prepped and ready, then I don't even have to think. I just have to have it in my calendar. You're going to go eat at this time. And I go downstairs, grab the thing out of the fridge, throw it onto the um, stove, and then I'm ready to go. And you could throw it in the microwave, whatever works best for you. But you're just thinking about any friction you come to along the way. You're setting yourself up to commit. And it's not just if it happens, it happens. Because that's a mentality I took for a while of, okay, if I wake up in time, then I'll go to yoga. So if it happens, it happens. Where now I plan ahead, I make sure I have my stuff ready to go. So it becomes part of what I'm doing and I'm committing to what I'm doing as well. Another way to put it is you're just lowering the barrier of entry for yourself. So going into my third tip here, it is going to be make it hard to skip, which kind of goes hand in hand with the second tip of lowering that barrier of entry, but being able to know yourself in this to make it even harder to skip. So another example, I have some clients that might struggle with taking their supplements um, or being regular with different things that they need to do. And so I really talk about what's something that you're always going to see that's going to make it really hard to go ahead and skip on this thing. And supplements used to be that for me where I would forget because they were in a cabinet, they were kind of in a weird spot in the kitchen, and it just wasn't something that would allow me to go ahead and do this task as easy as I could. And so now we have the supplements in a way that it's at chest level, so it's not too high up. Also has a drawer that pulls out so I can see all of them. And even sometimes when I'm getting stuff ready in the morning, I'll leave that drawer pulled out to make sure that there is no way for me to skip taking those. Instead of just going about and rushing out the door, I'm able to see, oh, I need to close that door before I leave. Then I see, oh. I need to go ahead and take my supplements. Another way that some of my clients have done this is one of my clients knows I'm always going to brush my teeth, so I'm going to put my supplements just right by that sink so I can go ahead and take them then because she was having a hard time remembering taking them later in the day. And even my sister ended up putting some drawers under her um, computer in her office where she could clearly see them so she would always be able to see them in eyesight and remember to go ahead and do that. So if there is a habit like even something like reading a book. Let's say you want to get into reading. Instead of putting the book on the bookshelf and having to go find the book and grab it out, being able to have not just an array of books laying around, you can, of course, but being able for me, I normally have the book I'm regularly reading or want to read in plain sight. So I can see it and remind myself I need to go do that. Kind of like having your book on your bedside table. So if you are thinking, okay, I'm about to go to bed, I'm going to turn on the TV, you see the book, you've lowered the barrier of entry, you make it hard to skip because it's sitting right there and you don't have an excuse for why you can't do it. So any way that I can make it easier for myself, and a lot of times I use the aspect of putting it in plain sight. There are so many times where I will just put something in the most obvious place for me to make sure that I can go ahead and get that done. Because even though I have willpower, even though I have discipline, and even though I might have motivation in a certain time, there's always going to be times where I don't have that or I'm just in a different headspace. Maybe work is really hard that day. There's going to be a lot of reasons that we could skip something. So anyway, I can make it so much easier for myself and make it almost impossible to skip, then that's what I'm going to do.
Let's take the habit, even if we're talking about my skincare, I used to want to have everything off my counter, and some of you might still want everything off your counter, but for me personally, I found it really hard to remember to do certain things when everything was put away. So I have my gua sha sitting on my counter so I can see it clearly, and so whenever I'm washing my face, I can think, okay, I can go ahead and do this next. Same thing with my skincare altogether. I have it in plain sight so that I never breeze right past it. Low reps is best. High reps is best. Fruit is so it's good. It's terrible. You, you should lift that. High reps. Carbs are weight. needed. Keto squats are bad for your Squats are great. You for should your squat ass to grass. It's fine. It fits my macros. It's for idiots. When there are so many mixed messages going around, it's hard to know what you should even do or focus on. But that's exactly where physique development one on one coaching comes in. You might have heard of online coaching or even hired a coach before, but we believe in teaching you the why behind what we do while truly taking your life into consideration. We want to train, educate, and empower you to reach your goals and help you to stop spinning your wheels and just finally feel good. And hey, we're here to help you look good too. You need you. Your health is your wealth. So join Physique Development and let us be the last coach you ever need. My fourth tip here, and it's one that you might have heard before, but it is to clump it with other habits that you already do and are already very consistent with it. So I know I've already used the example of brushing your teeth, and then I also use the example of the client that puts her supplements by her toothbrush because she knows she's going to remember it then, but it is a really great way to go about making sure that you keep up with your habits. So if you think about something that you always do, then being able to have something right next to it, right beside it, that it triggers an action so that you know, oh, I'm going to do this next thing next is going to put you in an extremely positive spot. It's even something when it comes to going on a walk, which I've now become very consistent with. And I probably shouldn't have said that word so confidently as both dogs are in the podcast room with me right now. But when I'm in a place where I'm like, okay, maybe I want to be able to listen to an audio book, or maybe I want to call a friend, I leave my headphones, my AirPods by the door. So then when I'm leaving on that, I'm able to clump and say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and call a friend now to get more into the habit of calling people and having that time to be able to dedicate to that. So any way that you can take something that you're already doing and put it together with another thing. Let's take, for example, if you always go to the bathroom in the morning, maybe that's the time instead of being on social media, you take some time to plan out your food on my fitness pal. Um, maybe it's the time that you look through your schedule a little bit longer. I really think about where I can maximize time as well and looking at things that maybe aren't serving me as much, where maybe it is easy to look at your phone and look at social media and scroll on that. But I really try to push away with that by either replacing it or clumping a habit together to make sure that I'm accomplishing that new goal or habit I have in place. These next two tips kind of go together just because they remind me of the same thing, but it's going to be do it with a friend so you have some sort of accountability and or little treat culture. I mean, one thing about me, I'm going to get myself a little treat. And any way that I can take something that I'm trying to do and pair that with a treat, and maybe the treat is just seeing the friend, and that can be a really positive thing to have in place. I have some friends where I know, okay, I can text them when I'm reading, or I can shoot them a message that I'm going on a run, or I'm going on a walk, whatever it may be, so that I have that accountability to do it. Um, And that's something that can really aid in helping you of not only knowing you're checking in with someone, but being excited about talking about that thing with someone can be absolutely huge. But again, with the little treat culture uh, for going to yoga, I have on and off gone to yoga for years and I was trying to get back into the routine of it. And something that really helped is that Alex and I made it part of a routine and part of a day that we really looked forward to. So it was something that we constantly looked forward to, even though it was a new habit we were trying to get into the routine of. So it became, that on Sunday mornings, we would go to yoga, and then we would go to brunch after and walk around. And then sometimes the rest of the day, especially because Sundays, it's kind of our day that we hang out, then we would maybe go and get nails done, maybe just do some stuff around the house, play some video games together, whatever that may be. But it was something that I always looked forward to and didn't want to ever skip yoga because going to yoga meant that we're going to brunch afterwards. And it was something really fun to be able to do. So any way you can kind of 
incentivize yourself with that little treat. Now, I'm not necessarily saying of, okay, every time you do something positive, that means that you should reward yourself with something huge. But it was something where we are going to go home and eat anyways. And so being able to have something where it was a little treat because I didn't have to cook and we were able to go and do something, then it really pushed us along. It got us out of the house for a couple of hours, allowed uh, being able to be have some really intentional time together, have some really intentional time for ourselves and show up for ourselves. And that can be a really positive thing. And I also have an appointment coming up this weekend and I didn't really want to go to the appointment, but I was like, ooh, after the appointment, I'll be over in this area. I'm going to go grab lunch over here and then sit and work for a couple of hours since I'm already in the area. And that's something that made the activity a little bit more fun, even if inherently it wasn't something I was extremely excited to go do. Being able to bake in something that you are excited about can be extremely, extremely happy with habit formation. Now, this next one isn't necessarily a tip within habit formation, but at the same time it is because it's the aspect of if you fall off track or if you mess up or make a mistake in the pursuit of this habit, it's about how fast you get back on track. There's a lot of different advice out there about this. You might have heard the uh, concept or the aspect of never miss twice. Uh, And I think that's a really great concept to be able to apply. It might not apply to every single situation, but it can be really great when it comes to, let's take planned workouts for an example. And I say planned workouts because it's not the aspect of, I'm going to work out every single day and so I can never go two days without working out. But let's say I have a planned workout, I have to move one of them, but making sure that the next time I have a planned workout, I'm able to make sure that it happens. Or let's say that you're trying to eat a little bit healthier or a little bit better. You eat something that you feel doesn't contribute to what your new goal or habit is, and then you could go into the mentality of that all or nothing or looking for perfection of saying, I didn't hit this goal. This was a failure. Now I'm just going to eat whatever. But it's really being able to realize you're just one decision one bite, one step away from being back on track and what you need to be able to do. And so first figuring out why you could have messed up or failed, so to speak, and also being able to plan to fail to a certain degree. Now, I didn't say expect to fail, but failure is inevitable. And so it's really, 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 really helpful to plan to fail. Take time to consider what would stop your habit from coming to fruition. What would likely get in your way? How can you work around these issues? Or how can you bounce back and get back on track if these issues come up? I remember it was very, very helpful for me to learn that top performers and extremely successful people make mistakes, make errors, and fall off track just like everyone else. But the difference is how fast they get back on track, or again, being able to take that quote-unquote failure, learn from it, apply, and keep going. Because when we look at it, failures in and of themselves should not be shameful because failures are on the pursuit of success. Like I said, failing is inevitable, but it's really being able to look at the bigger picture of what that failure allows you to do. In every single habit that I've ever tried to form, I have failed at one point or another or at multiple points or another. But it's not about that individual failure. That has a very small It has a very small impact on my overall goals and my overall habits. It really is looking at how I can build that consistency over time. And again, consistency doesn't mean perfection, and consistency doesn't mean every single day. It means being able to put in the effort. It means doing it more days than you don't do it. It means being able to have a schedule in which you do it. So you can be consistent with something if you only do it once a week, even if that might not technically fall into doing it more days than you don't do it. But you have that consistency of I'm going to do this once a week and those weeks stack up over time. And there's so much power in tiny gains. And oftentimes people, again, only look at the big thing. They look at the outcome instead of the aspect of doing the actual habit and how much those small gains, those tiny gains, those small wins can really freaking add up. 
To give an example of this, again, I know that those small gains can seem meaningless sometimes. They just seem so minuscule and tiny, and especially in the beginning, but small habits can actually deliver incredible results very quickly. Let's use something like I talked about of reading one minute per day. You might think that seems so small, that shouldn't even be something that I celebrate, and I should set a much bigger goal or habit. But if you started with one minute of reading and added one minute per day, you would have read for over eight hours in a 30-day time span, which is enough to finish a 400-page book every month. And that's just saying within one month, I'm not talking about now this is six months down the road and you're reading for hours a day. I'm saying if we just say on the first day of the month, I'm going to read one minute per day. And then you say the second day, I'm going to read two minutes per day. Third day, three minutes. Well, it wouldn't be per day, but three minutes that day, then four minutes, and so on until the end of the 30 days, you could read as much as eight hours and again, finish a 400-page book. So even if you restarted each month at just one minute per day, that sets you up for a lot of success. And like I said, if it's something that the barrier of entry is so low and there's no friction, it doesn't take motivation to just read one minute per day, that really adds up and pushes you towards what you want to do. But what I've also found is normally if I can bargain with myself of, okay, just do this for one minute, just do this for five minutes, I oftentimes end up doing it for more. But let's say there might be a day where I'm like, I literally got to my five minutes. That's still a win. But there might be a day where I set the timer for five minutes and then I end up reading for 10 or 20 minutes. And it it allows me to, again, have that lower barrier where I'm not saying I have to commit to 20 minutes. It's I'm going to commit to five minutes. And if I do more, then great. But other than that, then I'm just going to keep chugging along. A great example of this is actually my French. When we got back, from St. Bart's, I had made the decision that I was going to learn French. And I started right away on Duolingo that next day. And I am now about 245 days into Duolingo. And that is the streak that I've held. Now they do a great job of gamifying it, which is a great thing to do within your habits. But and something where I have to at least do one lesson per day, which it can end up that I'm spending one or two minutes on it, or I've spent up to 40 minutes on Duolingo in a day. But the only goal that I have for myself is at least spend one or two minutes on it to complete one lesson. And that's my bare minimum that I have to do per day. And now I have built up to the place where I have done that for 243 days, where if I started off, I know for a fact, if I said you have to do 10 minutes a day or you have to do 15 minutes a day of learning, I would not have kept up with the habit because there would have been days just inherently, I wouldn't have done it, wouldn't have been able to fit it in my day. There would have just been other stuff going on. The list could go on and on and on. And that would have been so discouraging and put me in a place where then it's like, well, I didn't keep the streak. I, it's, it's not even worth it to keep going on the next day. Are you sick and tired of your glutes not growing, turning around in the mirror and seeing a board for a booty? I've been coaching for nearly a decade, helping thousands of women reach their goals. The most common goal, grow my glutes. Women in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and even 60s able to grow their glutes with the guidance of my training programs. And for all this time, I've kept my best glute growth secrets only for my one-on-one clients. And that changes today. We just released our 12-week glute growth program in the PD training app. It is a four-day program with exercise and volume adjustments every three weeks. You can easily access the program through our app and track every single workout. Each exercise will have a detailed video teaching you exactly how to perform each and every movement. And guess what? I am no longer gatekeeping. I'm sharing every single one of my best glute growth secrets inside this program because you are awesome and I want you to have this program. I'm going to give you $25 off, making it a fraction of what you spent at Starbucks this past month. Use code POD. The link to purchase will be in the description. Now let's get back to the show. Another common phrase you might have heard is the tipping point. It's a very popular and great book as well. And it's basically saying the small change that tips you from taking or making an excuse to now taking action. And any of the things that I've talked about today when it comes to habit formation could be the tipping point for you. You doing with a friend could be the tipping point for you to actually take action. You setting it up that you get a little treat afterwards could be the tipping point that you take action. You having the 
motivation have to be so little, like it doesn't even take motivation to do the thing, could be the tipping point that pushes you over. You having it in plain sight could be the tipping point that points it over. So maybe all of these things have to work in conjunction. Maybe a few of these have to work depending on the habit. But being able to have different things in place is going to allow you to push forward for that, to hit that tipping point, to get you to where you want to go. And I know I mentioned it briefly within Duolingo, but any way that you can gamify it and make it better for yourself, the more you can learn about yourself and what is going to push you. That's when I was even looking at the different language apps. I chose Duolingo because I knew it had the streak factor. I knew that it was laid out like a game that would make me want to play it, make me want to keep the streak, and make it fun to interact with. And so if there's any way that you can do that with certain things, then that's going to push that habit along and make it easier, lowering that barrier of entry, lowering that friction, and making your habits simple. Before I wrap things up, I know I talked about what it looks like for meal prepping or meal planning for me and how that helps me with my habits within food. I talked about yoga and the clothes and laying those out. I talked about French and getting that in a positive spot, but I wanted to talk about my skincare routine and flossing a little bit more um, just before we end this episode. So when it came to flossing, it was something that I was first having a lot of um, friction between actually doing. So I first had to find a floss that I really liked, which I can link down below if you're interested. Not sponsored at all. I just found a floss that I really enjoyed. But within that floss, it was also the aspect of, again, sitting it in plain sight on my um, vanity slash sink to make sure that I saw it to do it. But I would make little goals with myself of, let's say I saw something stuck in my teeth or we had popcorn. I'd be like, I'm just going to get it out of that one tooth. And by telling myself, I'm just going to do one tooth, then again, sometimes I would only do the one tooth, but sometimes I would be like, well, since I'm here, I'll just do the tooth next to it. Well, since I'm here, I'll just do the tooth next to it and end up in a place where I did not plan on flossing at all that night and then ended up flossing my whole mouth. Now, again, we want to start small. So even if you do only floss that one tooth and then you get to two teeth the next day, then that's a win. But especially with certain habits that I know I can kind of propel myself into, I will do it in that way. And that's also kind of what I did within my skincare routine of stacking the different things I wanted to do. I knew within starting off that I wasn't going to be the girl who just had this 12-step skincare routine. I really wanted to focus on, I am just going to make sure I wash my makeup off my face every night. That is all that I am going to hold myself to. Not using a makeup wipe, I'm going to wipe or wash the makeup off my face. And there have been many, many times where I wash my face and then I think, oh, since I'm here, then I might as well do this next thing. But I did actually get really consistent with just washing my face and using a serum on it to then put myself in a place where I did end up getting the gua sha and adding that into my routine. And I did start off daily with the gua sha because I... For me, doing something daily really does help establish the habit. But then from there, now I'm able to do it every couple of days and feel good about that being a habit because I had to get it into my routine first to then be able to figure out what the exact time frame that worked for me. So on the pursuit of different habits, you might set your goals too high or you might think that something is going to end up being daily that it doesn't end up being daily. And you might have to play around to make it work for you because some of these these things might not be the tipping point for you and you might not be motivated by having a friend do it with you or depending on the type of friend, but being able to really be honest with yourself and have those conversations is going to allow you to make these things very simple. So I want you to think about, you've probably been thinking about a few different habits that you're like, I'm wanting to get into this. Maybe I even mentioned one of the habits, but what I want you to do is choose one thing that has been on your mind that you are wanting to do, whether whether it is to get more steps, to get more water in, to track your food, to eat a certain way, or even if it's something completely outside of fitness of you want to get into reading some more, you want to learn a different language, you want to learn how to play the ukulele, whatever it may be, I want you to take that one thing and then I want you to take one of the things that I've talked about today. So being able to 
do the one habit at once and starting small. So don't make it something that you're starting off with 20, 30 minutes to do it. Then I want you to think about how you can lower that barrier of entry for yourself to get started with that. And if there is a habit that you can clump it with, and then I want you to get after it. So you can go ahead, if you're watching this on YouTube, comment down below what that habit is, because I am interested, especially if it is outside of fitness, of what the habit is um, that you are going for. But I think that habits are so powerful. As I talked about at the beginning, they make up about 40% of your behaviors in a day. So it's a lot that's going on. And I hear so often that people just want to have certain habits, and then maybe they get discouraged. So I think that it's extremely instrumental to plan to fail, not expect to fail but plan to fail. Set yourself up for success by being able to see what could go wrong. And if something does go wrong, being able to take from that situation, apply it to see what you need to do for the next steps to go on. So I hope that this made habits simple for you and I'm excited to see them implemented into your life. We'll catch you in the next one.